Hello, my name is Mary Bush Shipko, and I was one of the first women airline pilots in the country. This is my memoir, Aviatrix. It details my journey, and it has a lot of the laws and history of women pilots that made it possible for me to be, and, and the other women around this time, that became women airline pilots. The cockpit was closed for many, many years. 1975 is considered the beginning of the quiet revolution for women, when many women started to move into male-dominated jobs. So I grew up in South Florida, and uh, some of the airplanes that I have stories about in my book are uh, this constellation, which uh, I flew all around the Caribbean, delivering all kinds of freight. I flew this airplane also delivering the same type of freight. This is a DC-7 CF. We could carry on both airplanes about 100,000 pounds in cargo. I did not have to unload it. <laughs> Now this airplane, sometimes I did have to load and unload. This is a C-46. I enjoyed flying that. This is a small, it looks like a smaller version, and it is in a way. It's a Twin Beach D-18. I flew this a lot to the Bahamas. And uh, it was a little bit of a squirrely airplane on the ground. I think this is probably the most ground-looped airplane there, there is. This was the airplane that I flew most of the time until someone uh, ditched it. He, the, he said, the guy that ditched it said the engine quit, and my dad said he simply didn't change from one fuel tank to the other. So this is a DC-3. I also took my airline transport rating in this aircraft right before I went to the airline. This airline, this airplane revolutionized um, airline travel. It had more comforts for the passengers and uh, benefits for the pilots than any other airplane had. And uh, there's several interesting stories in it. I have quite a few emergencies and abnormalities as one might expect from non-SCED operations. But I also had a few emergencies at the airline. So I did uh, start with the airline in 1976, and there were a handful of other women pilots uh, that had also started with other airlines. Emily Warner got hired in 1973, as well as Bonnie Taberzi. But there were very few of us. That's because 74 and 75, there was a recession. And this is the last airplane I flew for Hughes Air West. I did enjoy my time with Hughes Air West, but uh, I did leave my career early. I do write about it in my book, and I try to tell what I learned. Uh, many people find it inspirational. I'd like to read you a review. Um, Kirkus, a literary review out of New York, says, A pioneering pilot's story of breaking gender barriers, fighting discrimination, and making peace with her experience. A unique, engaging memoir, balancing personal story with broader social themes. And here's one from Nancy Bink. You know Nancy because uh, she was the art director at WAI for 30 years. Being a trailblazer is not an easy path, and Mary hit the wall trying to deal with the stereotypical right stuff airline captains of the day. We cannot always rise above the pressures of sexism. But it's a good lesson to remember as women push the boundaries even higher. This is a good book for anyone who thinks the fight was easy or that it's over. That's Nancy Bink. There's other uh, reviews in here as well. 
The book is $10. All proceeds benefit WAI. And on the last page, I have my uh, email. If you'd like to write me uh, a, something about what you thought about that book, please do. Thank you very much. I hope you find it inspiring and worth your time. Have a great conference.